The truth is, mixing patterns is a very simple process that you can learn in minutes. Once I point out what is happening, you'll be stunned at how easy it is. People often assume it's a gift given from above that one must be born with a good eye for design. And if you don't have it, you're just out of luck. But if you are able to recognize when a room with multiple patterns designed by a great designer is attractive, it seems to me you do have an eye for good design and you can learn to do it. I'm going to start with a decorating tip, then share with you five simple steps for combining patterns and end with ways you can get started and have immediate success. First, the tip. What interior decorators do first. They start with patterned rugs and art. Rugs like the hand-knotted Persian rug or something modern. And art, whether it's original or a reproduction, things with special meaning for you. These items could very well be sizable investments, but no matter the cost, you should have strong attachments to them. It only makes sense to create spaces where these beloved items can really shine. Now, that's your decorator tip. So, here are the five simple steps for combining patterns. Number one, start with a large scale pattern, sometimes called the hero fabric or the showstopper fabric. The pattern often has multiple colors, but that is not necessary. Step two, select two to five colors pulled from the hero fabric to focus on in the room. Number three, select striped or other geometric fabrics in your chosen color. Number four, add small scale prints again in your chosen color. These can be spotty or small floral or small organic shapes. They just need to be smaller in scale compared to your hero fabric. And number five, use solids to allow your patterns to breathe. What I also think of as resting your eyes. Taken all together, these five steps are all about scale, cohesive use of color, and making sure each pattern has a chance to shine. Now, I wanna take a few seconds to talk about color. I made a previous video adding color to your home like the pros, where I teach more in-depth color theory. There's a link to that video in the description below. I strongly recommend that you watch that video where I talk about primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, complementary and analogous colors, pastels, jewel tones, and earth tones. It really helps to understand why some colors work together and others don't. If you're following the pattern tips and things still feel off, it could be a problem with color. Now, let's review those five steps with samples of fabrics like you might see on a mood board. Look for the large scale pattern, our hero fabric, stripes, small scale patterns. Notice which colors from the hero fabric are being focused on. You can also notice if the solids have interesting textures. Look for the hero, stripes and or geometrics, small scale print, solid, and colors that are being focused on. One more, hero, stripes and geometrics, small scale prints, solids, and color being focused on. Hey, ready to try some rooms? Okay, we're looking for the same things a large scale pattern, our hero fabric, small scale patterns, stripes and geometrics. Also think about the number of colors being used in the room. Pay attention to the solids that are giving breathing space so that all those patterns aren't just lying on top of each other.
Now that we're in a room, we can also look around and see art and rugs too. Are you seeing it? Hopefully you're getting these names without my having to say anything. You see it? Is it starting to get easier? As you look at rooms in the future with patterns, see if you can recognize those same five steps. Now, every one of these rooms uses those same guidelines. Large-scale patterns, small-scale patterns, stripes and geometrics, solids. When you are identifying the colors used in the room, notice how the wall color is used, any interesting lamps, floral arrangements, or other objects in the room that pull out those colors from the hero fabric. Notice how the colors are pulled from the hero fabric, but sometimes the designer might use a color not found in the hero fabric because the new color enhances the colors in the hero fabric. Maybe it is a complementary color. And if you've watched my video you, and you know what a complementary color is, you can see that. Also, designers often use multiple small scale patterns and multiple geometrics. Look at not only the upholstered fabrics and window coverings, but pillows, stools, lampshades. Patterns also show up on wallpapers, art, and painted furniture. The rooms don't all have to be a classic English living room look with a large scale floral chintz as the hero fabric, several smaller florals and geometrics complementing the hero fabric. Very traditional, classic looking. The French also have several recognizable ways of combining patterns with a toile de jouy, those are the pastoral scenes, combined with a ticking fabric. There's another French style inspired by the region of Provence in the south of France, and it's influenced by the Indian style block prints with paisleys, because that's where those fabrics were originally made in France. Even the Scots get involved and combine multiple tartan plaids, sometimes with different scales, sometimes with different colors. But don't think you are just limited to classic European styles. We all know about boho. They're famous for combining patterns. But there are tropical fabrics, modern abstract patterns, Asian-inspired patterns. Everything you could imagine like this, I had to include this one, this is pink space themed fabric. That's a moon, that spot is a moon. This fabric even sets the colors in the adjoining room as I pull back, you can see that. Another pattern you often see is an animal print. Maximalists will treat animal prints like a solid except it doesn't work very well at giving your eye a place to rest. I hope you're seeing that mixing patterns can result in a wide variety of decor styles. Unlike the extremely neutral decor style that has been popular for long enough, these patterned homes have unique personalities, truly one of a kind. Now that you know how to do it, are you ready to give it a try? I promised you some simple ways that you can get started and have immediate success. I'm offering you three suggestions in no particular order, just hoping that one of them might speak to where you are right now. Now, the simplest one to explain is to limit colors. This mood board sticks to just blue and white of different scales. I had to throw in this picture. These are hand-decorated cookies. I may have to do this. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. I see blue rooms all the time. My bedroom is a classic example. A blue toile with a blue ticking. The rug has some other colors and the walls are a warm yellow. But my patterns were all blue in my fabrics. 
This little rocker has a faded blue pattern. Even the sheets are blue, a blue paisley. All very French in style. And then I found this chair at the Junior League sale last year. And even though it veers from my strict colors, it works with the colors in the rug. But still, everyone who looks at my room sees a blue and white room. But the pops of pink and red and green keep the room from being too predictable. Here are a couple of other rooms with limited color palettes. This pink one is not really my color, but it still works. This room, decorated by an internationally renowned designer, Mark Sykes, for the Kipps Bay showroom, has a limited color palette. I should like it, right? But, you know, it's just too much for me. It's okay to have an opinion. And if you don't like something, don't do it. That's one way to get your feet wet, but let's look at a few others. Now, if you happen to have a neutral room with no pattern, essentially you're living with modern farmhouse and are ready to move on. If you take this room and remove all the color, you're left with a very neutral room, right? White walls, basically white and a little bit of a grayish pattern on the, those far chairs, but it's a very, very neutral room. I really think, analyzing it, I think the starting spot for this was the art. So we're going to take the art and we're going to not choose the most dominant color, which would have been the green. You choose one of the smaller colors, like the red. And you can see how the, that red in the center of the picture has been picked up and we're going to make two pillows out of the red. And you can see kind of a geometric pattern there. And then the next color to pick, you pick a second color. And in this case, it'll be the blue. And we're going to make blue pillows to go with those pink pillows. Now, do notice there are pops of pink, not just in those two pillows, but there's pink in that blanket that's draped over one of the chairs. And if you look through to the next room, you see the pink echoing, the pink in the candlesticks, and there's even the, the rosy color in the rug. Now, the other thing they've done here is there actually is a hero fabric in this room, and it might surprise you what the hero fabric is. Those chairs have some pattern with a big kind of a sunburst kind of a pattern on there. That is the same fabric that's on the drapes. So I think that's our hero fabric. And then there is another surprising pattern on the stool, which uh, you might think that's the hero fabric, but I really think that that sunburst is our hero fabric. As the colors are added, do you notice it's not just one thing? So I showed you where the pink showed up in multiple different places throughout the room, but the blue also. It's not just in the picture. It's not just in the pillows. You can see it in the floral arrangement and in the books, and of course in the little uh, stool and the, the blue chinoiserie. Now, there are also little touches of that yellowish acid green. We've got the lamps, but we've also got the yellow paint, a real sunny, nice yellow paint, and that is in our hero fabric also. So this is just a, a really well done, fun room. So far, I've shared two ways to easily get started mixing patterns in a room. I always teach for the test. So the first way to easily decorate a room from scratch is to limit the color palette, selecting several patterned fabrics within that palette. A hero fabric and stripes and geometrics and small patterns. Combine the fabrics and you have a room. The second way is perfect if you have a neutral room and want to introduce pattern a bit more cautiously and less expensively. Start by adding a piece of art or a patterned rug. Pull a less dominant color from your piece. Select a large scale print with that color and make two pillows. Then choose a second color, 
finding a smaller print with that color and cover two or more pillows. Then add an unexpected pillow that you love so the room is not too predictable. In this room, those unexpected fabrics became the hero fabric. Lastly, echo those colors you've chosen throughout the room in books, blankets, floral arrangements, candles, lamps, and other accessories, even paint. All of these ideas are relatively inexpensive and low commitment and can be done and undone easily, even the paint. Curtains take miles of fabric and are a huge commitment. And upholstery, whoa, you'll be living with that for a while. But a pillow? A yard of fabric and you can sew it with a needle and thread. Are you getting a little braver? The last suggestion I have is to use collections of fabrics designed to be used together. You just select your hero fabric and the stripes, geometrics, and small scale patterns you want from a particular collection. The least expensive way, not cheap, just less expensive, is to find a high-end fabric store that specializes in discounted fabrics for interior design. This is going to have to be done through an interior design firm. It will probably need to be a custom order. You will pay. Historically, Waverly fabrics have been more affordable, especially if you're doing curtains and can use a bolt around 25 yards. So I'm going to share with you the collection I bought. Only one time have I ever bought a collection of fabrics, and that was over 30 years ago. And here's what I had. This was my hero fabric. And I had a, a small scale print and a stripe that I used with it. And it was purchased to coordinate with my black oriental rug. And if you see the two together, you're going to think, oh, that's pretty wild looking. I still use the little stripe on the chair. The little chair is still in my living room. It went very, very nicely with the rug. The larger scale print was on my windows. These were the drapes on my windows, and they were not directly on the rug. So it, it was, you know, had a little space, a little breathing space, shall we say. So the, the hardwood floors were the solid that separated them from the rug. Um, and I used the companion fabrics to create pillows. And uh, by purchasing a bolt, I did not pay quite so much for it. Now that you know how to do it, the hunt begins. Combining fabrics is all about finding fabrics, keeping your eyes open. I've found fabrics I love in surprising places. This floral fabric in my library, I suspect I bought off a bolt at Joann's over 30 years ago. The plaid was a pair of pillowcases on clearance. The gold damask is an outdoor fabric purchased on clearance at Joann's. I bought the remainder of a bolt and got a terrific price. And the fabrics in the upstairs bedroom came from all over. The green coverlet and the crocheted spread on the bed are family pieces. The chintz chair and the pink striped pillow sham came from thrift stores. The pillow with the botanical came from Tuesday morning. The green drapery fabric was purchased online. Now, where do you start looking? Well, an obvious choice is brick and mortar stores. Everybody has a Joann's. The selections are not huge, but I've found a lot of interesting things at Joann Fabrics over the years. Go to the back of the store where they have the decor fabrics and you'll find pretty good stuff. Now, if you go into the fabric selections at craft stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, they don't have that much, and I'd be doing well to find one fabric on any given day, usually nothing at all. Another thing is that a lot of large metro areas have a, some kind of a retailer that does discount fabrics. Here in the D.C. area, we have a company called Hot fabrics. 
It's more of a warehouse. The front has design services where you can place special orders, but there are hundreds, maybe thousands of bolts of fabric in the back that you can actually um, find all kinds of interesting things, which I have done. Um, and so that's a good place to go and buy something off the bolt, and they do have sales, but it's also a source where you could order some things. There are also online sources. The one I have used the very most is fabricguru.com. Um, of course, on a computer, your colors are not going to be true, but you can get samples sent to you for $2 each, and I would definitely recommend you order a sample, order multiple samples, because they will mail them to you just immediately. And the money that you pay, I usually buy five of them, you know, like $10, and that will be applied to your purchase. So essentially, you're getting free samples as long as you're serious about buying something. Another source that I have not used but was has been strongly recommended to me um, is spoon flour. Now, do be careful. They have all kinds of weights, so clothing weights, drapery weights, that type of thing. So you, they print the fabric on demand, and so you get different weights. So you're looking at it, and you need to, to factor in the price of a heavier weight fabric for pillows or draperies or whatever. So hopefully that'll get you started. You know what to do. You know where to find it. This is a great fun thing to do, and I encourage you let me know what you're going to be working on and if you have any more questions. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.